This is Joel Markowitz from DCTheaterScene.com. I'm here at Theater J with actress Amy McWilliams, who is starring in the new klezmer musical, Schlemiel the First. Thanks for being here, Amy, after the 3 p.m. matinee and before you have to do it all over again tonight. Well, I'm happy to be here. And when and how did you get involved with Schlemiel the First? Uh, I, I was actually asked to do the concert version a year ago by um, Naomi Robin, who's the casting director here. And um, and that's it. <laughs> that's, she asked me to do it. I said yes, and, and they asked me back. So. Well, tell us about the character you play. Uh, her name is Trina Ritza, and she is also called Mrs. Schlemiel. She's the um, long-suffering wife of Schlemiel, who um, has absolutely no ambition, so she's kind of having to carry the load for the whole family. So how does your character grow during the show? Well, I... The thing that I, I really love about the story is um, the rediscovery of Shlemiel and his wife of their relationship. So they end up falling back in love with each other um, during the course of the piece. And, and that's, that's really, you know, her story. Well, how much of your own personality and life experiences do you bring to, the, to this role? Well, um, my husband is not ambitionless <laughs> and I don't have kids. So those are two big differences between me and her. But um, I think any any woman who leads a busy life can understand how you can get bogged down in the minutia of, of just trying to survive. And I think that's where she starts out her journey. Well, Shlemiel the First was pr first presented last year in a concert version, which I attended. And now it's a full-blown stage production. What changes have been made in the book and score for this production? And has your character been written more lines or given any new songs? Um, there's actually not been a lot of changes from the concert version. There were changes to the, the script and score for the concert version. Um, but for this production between last year and, and the full stage production, there's not been much change at all. There's actually probably been more, uh, a few minor cuts, but no major changes in music. What's your favorite song on the show? Mine is Papa Your Sugar. I like that little beat to it. <laughs> well, actually, um, my, my favorite is the duet with, with Tom, uh, Can This Be Hell. And talk a little bit about, set up the song a little bit. Well, um, Mr. and Mrs. Schlemiel, uh, as I said earlier, part of their journey is kind of falling in love with each other again. And um, Can This Be Hell is the song that they sing um, about the fact that something that's supposed to be so bad, i.e. cheating on your spouse, which is what they think they're doing, even though they're not, um, could be so bad when it feels so good, when it seems so right. Can this be wrong? It feels too right to me. Your voice, your song, the stories that you tell. Can this be hell? Thank you. Well, you know, you played Belle Stark in Theater J's production, Rocket to the Moon. Are there any similarities between these two characters? Uh, I think um, Belle is much more uh, controlling than Trina Ritza is. I think Trina Ritza is, a little, is, is much more resigned to her, um, her relationship and her, her fate in life. And Belle had major control issues, <laughs> which ended up kind of being the downfall of her marriage, I think. Okay, why do you like to come back and perform at Theater J? Oh, I, you know what? This is a, a really great house to perform in. The audiences are really appreciative. It's an amazing house to sing in. It's very live. None of us are mic'd, so that, that gives you as a singer a whole lot of freedom. And, um, and, it's, and it's just a great playing space. So. Was it hell? <laughs> is it hell? <laughs> no, no. We, we, we had a tough week during tech. That got close to hell, but not really. Um, it was just a long week, but but now we're up, we're running, and, and we can all just have a lot of fun. So, You played Mrs. Cratchit in Ford's Theater's annual production of A Christmas Carol. How many years did you do that? Um, I was at Ford's for six years, and five of those was, was as uh, Mrs. Cratchit. Okay, and do you really enjoy playing these suffering wives? <laughs> well, I, <laughs> uh, I guess so. I get cast in a lot of them, don't I? Um, uh, actually, the wonderful the wonderful thing about Mrs. Cratchit is that um, even though she's long suffering, she and her husband have a very loving relationship. And and in in the other part of it that I always enjoyed with Mrs. Cratchit was was working with the kids. Um, I love working with with children on stage. Um, I really really always gotten a kick out of it. And I've got two great kids on this show. So uh, my favorite performance of yours, and there are a lot that I loved, 
was Mrs. Strong and Signature's Helen Hayes Award sweeping production of Urinetown. Was it a hoot playing that role? It was a hoot doing that show. It was probably the best shape I've ever been in my life because we never stopped running. And you climbed up and down off of the set. There were no stairs to help you out. So um, it was a, it was a workout every single time. But but everyone was so committed to the style of the show and what they were doing on stage that it just was a joy to do. So how did you survive all those physical demands of that show? And tell the, the listeners, uh, you had to do a very uh, floppish kind of thing at the oh, end there. Oh, yeah. Well, I did um, something that you... It's called a, a, a fish flop, and, and basically you, from a squatting position, you roll onto your back and you roll over onto your front using your one of your shoulders to do it. Um, and it's it's not that it's not that bad. You just don't want to do it more than eight times a week. <laughs> or you can flounder. Is that right? That's right. That's right. That would have been the other option. But it was a, you know, that was one of the things I actually did in a rehearsal, and, and the director loved it, so I was stuck doing it. So, um, but but very very fun. So you have appeared in many local productions. At Keegan Theater, you play Terry and Sideman, uh, Blanche in the Streetcar Named Desire, and May in Fool for Love. At Signature, you've appeared in many of their productions, including You're in Town, Xander's Boat, In the Garden, The Fix, and Working. You've also appeared at Theater of the First Amendment, Imagination Stage, and American Century Theater. Have I missed anything? Um, no, that's that's pretty, yeah. <laughs> so why do you think you continue to get the great roles and continue the work in the theater when so many actors have short careers? Well, I'll tell you, um, some of the roles that I, I've done, um, people are consider them, you know, great roles, big roles, important roles, and some of the work that I've done is playing the ensemble or playing the chorus. So I work consistently because... Um, I, I want the work and um, I'm not as concerned about always having the leading role. So what advice would you give a young actor who is starting out and is about to enter his or her first audition? Be prepared. It's the Boy Scout motto, it should be yours. Make sure you really, really understand what you're doing when you're doing a monologue. Really feel and understand the song that you're singing and make sure it's the right thing for you, your age group, and your type. Those are not easy things to always find out, but there's a lot of good people out there who do um, audition coaching, and I would certainly encourage anyone who feels unsure of their material to go and talk to somebody they trust. Okay, let's talk about your hubby, Steve McWilliams excellent guitarist, composer, singer, and actor. Do you make beautiful music together on the stage? <laughs> we have, actually. Um, we, uh, we've we got a group together called uh, Little River Turnpike, which is Steve and myself and Steve and Gregory Smith. And, um, and we have performed mostly just at Signature because they asked us to. Um, but we do a, a three-part harmony um, with just acoustic guitar. It's a lot of fun. Talk about some of the shows you both have appeared in. Um, we have done, uh, well, in professional theater, we did shows together way, way back when, but um, we did uh, Grapes of Wrath together. Um, and that and was at Ford's, That right? was at Ford's. And uh, we did Pump Boys and Dinettes with uh, Keegan Theater together. Um, and uh, way back when, actually, I, f I met my husband on stage um, in a community theater production of Greece that Donna Migliaccio was also in. I bet you she played Rizzo. I bet you're right. <laughs> How'd you know? <laughs> and, uh, and I played Sandy, and Steve played Danny, and the rest was history. So okay. <laughs> very corny, but true. Well, just to end this uh, very lovely podcast, and thank you for being here. Oh, sure. My pleasure. Uh, please personally invite our listeners to come see Schlemiel the First and tell them why the show will bring them some holiday cheer. Please, please, please uh, come see Schlemiel the First. I will guarantee you it will not stretch your brain. It will not pressure you to think too hard. It will have your feet tapping to some amazing klezmer music, and it is a very silly and very sweet story. And just the perfect antidote for all the craziness of the holidays. Okay, thanks for being here and happy holidays Thank to you, you and Steve. Same to you. And I'm looking forward to seeing you on the stage in 2008. Well, good. I'm looking forward to you seeing me on the stage too. <laughs> okay, thank you. Shlemiel the First plays through January 20th at Theater J at the corner of 16th and Q Streets in Washington, D.C. Tickets can be purchased at www.washingtondcjcc.com org or by calling 1-800-494-8497.